Let me just try and share my screen here and see if this works. Perfect. Can you all see that? Yeah. Okay, great. Let me have a look here. Okay, so thank you all for attending our webinar today on gender balance in the Department of Agriculture. My name is Shannon Enright and I am co-author of this report with my colleague, Dr. Helen Russell. I just want to start by thanking the Department of Agriculture for funding this research and the gender balance steering group within the department for carrying out the survey that was actually used in this research. So a bit of background as to why we carried out this research. Um, from previous research, we know that there are significant gender differences in the civil service with men more likely to occupy senior civil service positions. There's also significant variation in the proportion of women across departments and the Department of Agriculture has a relatively low proportion of women at higher grades, which prompted this study by the department. We know that gender equality now is not only relevant for employees and organizational efficiency, but also at a broader societal level for the legitimacy of decision making. The survey we use here was part of a wider initiative to increase gender balance within the department and builds on previous research carried out across the civil service. So looking at female shares across grades within the civil service as a whole using figures from 2016, we see that the proportion of women decline as you move up the organizational ladder from 75% oh, sorry, at clerical officer level to just 21% at secretary general level now, these numbers may have shifted since, as this is from 2016. So we had two main research questions for this study. One, given the patterns that we see, this study sets out to see if there was a perception of gender bias in the Department of Agriculture, and also the factors that might be associated with this. And then two, if there were gender differences in factors relative or relevant, sorry, to advancement. There is a focus on flexible working as our previous research across the civil service found that lack of flexibility in higher positions was a barrier to women going for promotion, but also other research which shows the participation in flexible work can damage promotional prospects. We also then look at training and networking because these are all important aspects of occupational advancement that we see in the research. So looking at the methodology, so the research um, on the study was based on a staff survey of roughly 3,300 people within the Department of Agriculture carried out in the fourth quarter of 2018. The survey contained 40 questions in total, which looked at various things from respondents' demographic variables, caring responsibilities, flexible work arrangements, and beliefs surrounding gender bias within the department. So we only end up, the survey received um, 933 responses, which roughly equates to a 28% response rate. Uh, but we do only use 904 in analysis. And this is just because um, there are certain questions which weren't answered by respondents that are important, um, such as gender. For the analysis, we use statistical models to compare like with like using the survey data. But we also analyze results of recent promotional competitions using administrative data from the Department of Agriculture. So by way of context, this graph shows the gender composition of department staff. So if you look at the all total here, we see that 47% of the Department of Agriculture employees are female, which is one of the lowest shares across the civil service. And the proportion of women varies across streams, as you'll see here, ranging from just 7% in the technical stream to um, two thirds in the laboratory stream. And looking at the lower part of the graph here, uh, we see that as you move up the organizational ladder, so from clerical officer up to principal officer, the proportion of women declines. Now, we also know from previous research that the proportion of women occupying senior positions, which would be principal officer and above, 
also varies considerably across departments, ranging from 20% in the Department of Finance and Office of Public Works to 63% in the Department of Children and Youth Affairs. Uh, using these figures, we know that only four departments or agencies had more women than men in, in these senior positions, and the Department of Agriculture fell towards the bottom of this scale. So looking at experiences of gender bias in the department, to analyze this, we draw on a question from the survey, which asked respondents if they had ever experienced any form of gender bias in the department. So we saw that 48% of women and 33% of men said that they had experienced gender bias. So in this chart, we'd be looking at those in the moderate amount, great deal, and the a little part here. And controlling for other factors, uh, we found that the odds ratio of experiencing gender bias was almost twice as high for women than men in the department. So looking at differences across streams, uh, these are results from our modeling, which show the marginal effects that control for other variables such as demographic characteristics and, and length of service and things like that. So we see the highest gap in experiences of gender bias between women and men in the technical and the inspector streams. And this is very interesting because these streams are actually both male dominated in terms of their employees. So moving on to looking at gender bias in promotional competitions. To analyze this, uh, we draw on another question from the survey, which asked respondents if they believe that promotional competitions are completed without any gender bias. So looking at this, contrary to the results that we just saw on experiences of gender bias, we see that women were less likely to believe that there was gender bias in promotional competitions with only 11% of women believing this compared to almost a third of men. We found that perceived gender bias was lower among new recruits, which would be those employees who had been with the department for less than five years. And perceptions were not found to differ by things like flexible working patterns or whether respondents had childcare or adult care responsibilities. We do find that respondents working in the technical stream were significantly less likely to believe that there was any kind of gender bias in promotion. So these again are model results, uh, which showed the net effects controlling for other factors. And taking into account respondent stream, those in the admin stream, uh, the administrative stream that is, we're more likely to believe that gender bias exists in promotional competitions than other streams. And we see the largest gap between women and men here in this stream. So a total of 101 respondents um, actually left comments relating to gender bias in promotions, with almost 70% of these referring to a belief surrounding a bias towards female candidates in promotion which you can see from the comments listed here. So there's one that's competitions are biased in favor of females now rather than ability. Another one that says there is an ideological bias towards gender, which can ignore merit. Um, one that says, I think people should only be promoted on their skills and not their sex. And finally, another one that says, I think there is a positive discrimination towards female candidates to address gender imbalance. I disagree with this and believe each post should be filled by the best candidate. So these comments seem to suggest that there may be a misperception in how the gender balance initiative is implemented within the department itself. Now, looking at why this might be. So there have been initiatives within the civil service and the department to promote uh, greater gender equality in more senior appointments and there may be a misperception of how these work. So for example, in January, 2017, the civil service introduced a target of 50-50 gender balance in senior appointments. And so in order to achieve this, preference is to be given to a female candidate only when deciding between two candidates who have equal merit and where women are underrepresented on the management board 
of the department or the office in question. So this perception that women are promoted over more qualified men um, could be due to a lack of understanding surrounding the equal merit facet of the gender balance initiative. Now, although the gender balance measures introduced involve a target rather than an actual quota, there is pushback we're seeing from some male civil servants. And this kind of response is common to situations where an in-group lose some of their privileged status and therefore perceive progress towards gender equality as a loss. And we see this from previous research. Uh, the perception of gender bias in promotion seen amongst men in the study could also be influenced by gender stereotypes surrounding women's suitability for senior positions. These stereotypes generally involve a perceived lack of fit between the demands of senior positions and the attributes of women. So in order to examine whether there was any evidence of gender differences in success rates within promotional competitions, we analyzed recent competitions within the department using administrative statistics. Looking at principal officer competitions in 2017 and 2019, we found that 11% of male applicants and 18% of female applicants were successful. For executive officer competitions, uh, we did find that 17% of male candidates and 11% of female candidates were successful. Now, looking at choice square and exact binomial tests, uh, these showed that the differences that we saw there between men and women within these competitions were not significant. So there was no significant differences in the success rate of the male and female applicants. Now, with this information, we don't have any additional information about the characteristics of the applicants, such as their qualifications or their experience. So we can't say for certain that one group was more qualified than the other, but these results are useful to show that in general, there isn't one group that's advantaged. So moving on to results on flexible work options, we find that 36% of respondents currently participate in flexible work options. This was highest in the administrative stream and lowest in the technical and inspectorate streams. We do find that childcare and adult care responsibilities uh, significantly increase take up of flexible work options. And we also find significant gender differences with the odds of currently participating in flexible work 1.8 times higher for women, the odds of previously participating three times higher, and the odds of previously taking some form of leave 2.1 times higher for women. Now, despite such a high take up of flexible work options, there is still a large unmet demand for such options with almost half of those who were not participating wishing to avail of flexible work options. And the odds of wishing to avail of flexible work options um, was also significantly higher for women in line with the results we I just discussed on uh, use of flexible work options. We also find support for uh, high support for new forms of flexible working. So, such as working from home and compressed hours. We find that 73% of men and 68% of women wanted to work from home and 64% of men and 74% of women wish to work compressed hours. So looking at perceptions of flexible work within the department, we see that use of flexible work options has a positive effect on perceptions of departmental support for work-life balance. But despite this, over a third of workers believe that using flexible work options negatively impacts their chances of promotion. And this belief did not differ significantly across streams or between men and women. 
Uh, we do find that respondents with adult care responsibilities and those who have availed of leave schemes in the past were significantly more likely to believe that flexible work negatively impacted promotional opportunities, whereas those who were currently working flexibly were more optimistic. So we also find significant gender differences in training, network building and promotions. So for training, we find that it was significantly lower for women controlling again for age, length of service, family characteristics such as childcare or adult care responsibilities. We also see an effect for occupational stream with those in the administrative stream significantly less likely to have participated in training in the two years prior to the survey. Looking at professional networks, we find that 46% agreed or strongly agreed it was easy to build professional networks. But similarly, we find that women and those in the administrative stream found it more difficult to build professional networks. And looking at promotions, uh, women were also less likely to have applied for a promotion in the two years prior to the survey, controlling again for demographic and family characteristics. Again, we find a significant effect for stream with those in the administrative stream significantly more likely to have applied for a promotion. But this could be that there are more vacancies within this stream, um, but we are finding a significant effect for the administrative stream. So there are a number of policy recommendations uh, that we suggest due to the findings of the report. Looking at perceptions and experiences of gender bias, um, we recommend transparency with employees around how exactly the gender balance initiative is implemented. Um, this could involve the analysis and dissemination of competition results in anonymized form, um, which can be used to verify that promotion processes are unbiased, uh, such as the analysis that was shown in this report. We also recommend framing initiatives in terms of improving diversity. So the department should consider implementing voluntary diversity task forces, as previous research shows that involving managers in initiatives to increase diversity was found to be more effective than increasing things like grievance procedures or compulsory diversity training. We also recommend the implementation of regular surveys, such as this one carried out by the department, to assist in identifying barriers to gender equality within the civil service. So with flexible work options, we also recommend extending flexible work options to more employees where possible, as we are seeing quite a large unmet demand. Uh, this sort of we also recommend extension of uh, the flexible work options to uh, predominantly male streams. And this could help to undermine the perception that gender equality only benefits women. Also the normalization of working flexibly for male as well as female coworkers, which could have the effect of reducing the perception that take up of these options signals work commitment. We do find uh, now that COVID has had unintended consequences here, like, oh, like everything else, um, COVID has affected uh, flexible work options. So within the civil service, uh, there are many grades and departments who never worked from home before, who have began working from home due to the restrictions. Uh, looking at differences in experiences, we also recommend ensuring women are encouraged and facilitated to participate in training, as well as further developing mentoring, which is already in place in the department, as well as peer to peer networking opportunities. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with myself or Helen, our emails are listed here and the report is available to download on the ESRI website.